Hi boys and girls and big kids. This is Mrs. Telesio and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to use Photoshop Touch to make a very fun and easy class project that you can use for kids of any age. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Photoshop Touch and I'm going to import one of my photos and you can choose where you're going to import it. I am going to pick one from my fo photo library and I'm going to take a picture that I took of one of my students of their silhouette. Now to do these silhouettes to get best results you are going to want to have the light source behind you and it darker in the front. So I found that the very best place to do this is right inside of your classroom door. So if you just open the door and have your student stand right in the doorway with the sun behind in the broad daylight, you can have a pretty good background and you might need to get down low when you take the picture and uh, that way if there's any trees or something in the background, most of them will be uh, not in the way. So that way you can make a cleaner uh, selection. It just makes your job a lot easier. Now first what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for my selection tools and notice that there's a whole bunch of them here that are nested in here. I'm going to pick the one that's called the magic wand tool and it's actually quite easy if you have this clear background with this blue. So I'm going to then just click on the part that I want to have selected and notice you can see what those what they call the marching ants and uh, that is the part where I'm going to select and then if I go and also just notice what I have here with the mode and the tolerance and you'll you can fiddle with those if you want uh, but this is going to work for me now up on the top uh, I'm going to choose the extract tool and if I click on that it automatically deletes the background that I don't want and then I can deselect so that I am no longer selecting those marching ants. Now, one thing that I also find that's a really good tip for making good selections is to zoom in as much as possible. So this looks great on my little tiny phone, but if I move in real close, you can see if there's any little imperfections. And this actually did a really good job of making a selection, but I can see some little messiness right here. So I'm going to go over to my eraser tool and fiddle with my brush. I'm going to have the flow opacity all the way up to the top and the hardness all the way up to the top. And then you can make, if you're just going to swipe a large area, you can make your brush really big. That way, if there's any little stray pixels that you don't notice, it will be sure to clean those up pretty well. And then if I want to get in more detailed, I can make my brush a lot smaller and it looks pretty good. So just pinch in as much as you want and then here I can see a few little stray pixels here and you can just go and clean those up. And notice there's a little checkerboard background. That means clear. So I've cut out my background and I now have a clear transparent background. And I think it's pretty good. Now notice it's a little bit blue. There's some blue fringes because it was with the sky in the background. So now what I'm going to do is go up to my toolbar up here and I'm going to go to the black and white and that will make it so that my photo is only black and white. Notice I've lost the blue tone to it. And then if you really want to make sure that it's really dark color, I can go to my brightness and contrast and lower my brightness all the way down so that it is as dark as possible. And then when I'm okay, I press the check mark. Okay, so now I have the silhouette on a black on a transparent background and I'm going to add myself a new layer. And one of the beauties of Photoshop Touch is that not only can I also do this on my phone now, but I can add a whole bunch of multiple layers and I think it's really quite easy to do in Photoshop Touch. And it's also great training if you're going to learn Photoshop later. So I'm going to add myself an empty layer and right now it's on the top. Um, and then I'm going to go up into here 
in this little ampersand and I'm going to choose a fill and stroke. And I've just added myself an orange layer. Now you're going to want to make sure that you're choosing the fill layer so that you can get yourself nice a nice solid layer. And then also you can fiddle with your color by going around through here. You can go and choose directly this way, uh, whatever works for you. But I like this orange color. So I'm going to stay with that. And then you check mark. So right now the orange is covering my silhouette because the orange layer is on top. But what I want to do is put the orange layer on the bottom so that I can see the silhouette on the top. So all you have to do is touch it and drag it down. It's very easy to move the layers. So right now it already looks pretty good, but I really love kind of like a little spotlighting vignette effect. So I'm going to go into my special effects and notice there's a whole bunch of different menus on here and I encourage you to play with those as well. But I like this little lighting effect here. So I'm going to click the lighting and it automatically has added myself a little spotlight and you can you can choose whether you want a point or a spotlight or a directional light and you can play with it and you can also play with intensity. Uh, but I think this is too light so it really looks pretty pretty good just the way it is if you want a little dark around the edges. So it just kind of gives a little bit more emphasis right to her profile and it gives it a nice little effect that I like. And you can also change the, the color that you want. Then once again, check mark. And I'm, I like it. I think it's pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to add some text. So if you're working with students to do a language arts project, maybe in the beginning of the year, you can add text very easily and have them pick some adjectives to describe themselves. Maybe they can put their name. And then over here, there's a whole bunch of different fonts that you can choose. So you can pick one that you think works or let the kids choose um, which one is their favorite. And I'm going to pick this one. And then you can type in the bottom the word that you want. And you can do this as many times as you want. Notice they have some little selection tools too. So if you want it bold or if you want it to change color, you can do that too. And then I can, I can zoom in and drag on my little corners to place it just where I want it. And you can press the check mark for that. If you want to, if you change your mind later and you need to scooch it because you're going to add more text, you can always press the transform tool and do the same way. And I think that it's easier to grab the handles if you zoom in a little bit closer. And then check mark. And then you can do that with as many layers as you want. So as you know, as, as you can see, it's actually quite simple and a really great class project. Uh, and then when you're done over here, what you can do is you can flatten all your layers so that they're all in one layer. And then you can press flatten. And then I, I'm done. I can press done over here. Press save. And now I have it in my little library. So if I want to name it, I can. And then I get to figure out what I want to do with it. So if you want to save and sync your files so that they're stored in the Creative Cloud so you can access them from the Creative Cloud, it's really easy to do. Um, I always have mine, so mine's automatically saving. So that way I can access my photos later from any other device or if something happens to my phone, they're safe. In this case, I'm just going to save it to my camera roll. So I press save to camera roll. And then I select any of the photos that I want to save. In this case, I'm just going to save that one. And then I press OK. And it publishes it. And then automatically I can go and find it. And it is in my cal camera roll. So right there, great class project, lots of fun. And I did that all on my phone.